This, in my opinion, is the best live studio update so far. It's broken down into two segments, which are themes and compatibility mode. Let's look at both of those now. Before we get to that, let's pay some bills and thank our sponsor, NordVPN. Nord has an exclusive deal for you, and I'll tell you more about that later, but let's talk about some of the benefits first. Nord will protect you from some of the most common online threats. This includes man-in-the-middle attacks, phishing, password attacks, DDoS, malware, and more. Did you know you can use Nord to generate new livestream and content ideas? Just set your Nord to a different country, then visit TikTok or YouTube's website. And if you're using incognito mode or a new account, you'll see a completely fresh feed with new ideas to inspire you. Nord will also block trackers and intrusive ads, and it's backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. My exclusive deal will give you over 60% off NordVPN. Just head to nordvpn.com slash wgmojo, which is in the comments or the description. And once again, thanks to Nord for sponsoring this video. And we'll start with compatibility mode. I think this is a bit of a confusing name from TikTok, but basically it gives you a separate vertical canvas and a separate landscape canvas. Your viewers get to choose which one they see. Now here's a quick recording I made of what it looks like. As you saw, I just made some basic canvases. When your viewers first join the stream, they will see vertical mode by default, but you see this button here in the middle, they can tap this button to go into landscape mode. And this is what the landscape mode looks like. The viewers can just view it full screen and they also have the option to open up the chat as well. So first question would be, how do you switch to compatibility mode in the top left corner of Live Studio? You can see on this drop down, we now have compatibility mode along with landscape and portrait. And we'll need to make some completely new scenes for this. So once I've clicked on compatibility mode, I'm gonna click on add scene in the bottom left corner. And to keep it simple, I'm gonna scroll down and choose the camera only option. And I'm gonna press add, and it's probably gonna add my second camera, which it's done. But you can see it's added everything in two places. We've got the landscape layout on the left and the portrait layout on the right. Now it's a little bit small if you wanna edit it, but what TikTok's added is either here, here, or if I hover over the scenes on the left here, you can press this edit button and it enlarges it. And then we can just edit our landscape and portrait scenes accordingly. So for example, what I'm gonna do is center my camera better and center my screen better. We can then add in additional sources on the left. For example, I would probably add in a Tickfinity link source for both my landscape and portrait scenes. You can see in the bottom right here, we have this sync to portrait scene option. So let's add a goal and we'll see what this does. I'll pick the box, I'll press add. We'll add in a follower goal and it took a few seconds to load, but you can see the follower goal has now been added to both landscape and portrait mode. And I can click around on both of them and place it wherever I want. Now you can see this follower goal has a specific theme. We'll get to that in a bit. But first you also might have noticed these buttons at the top. This shows us what the actual viewers see when they view your live stream. To me, it is definitely a little bit enlarged. There's no way the gifts are this high up the screen, but it gives you a general overview and you can see which parts of your live stream might be blocked by the TikTok interface. You also have the For You page and that is grayed out because if they're seeing a live stream in the For You page, it's always in vertical mode. But this is what they'd see in your Portrait For You page stream. Once you're happy with all your stream layout, you would just press go back in the bottom right corner and then you would just go live the usual way by hitting the go live button at the bottom. Now, a quick note about bitrate here. If I go into the settings, you can see my bitrate is set to 6400 for a 1080p stream, but obviously we're using two canvases here and that means we potentially have to send more data to TikTok. So I asked in the live studio discord about this what they told me is that they'll send 6400 in landscape and 3000 in vertical. So to use compatibility mode in 1080p, it's using over nine meg of your upload speed. Now let's move on to themes and TikTok's added four free themes to Live Studio. Now you don't need to be in compatibility mode to access this, but I'm gonna stay in compatibility mode. And in the bottom left corner, I'm gonna click add scene. I'm gonna scroll down and click on camera only again, but this time I'm gonna click on go to theme library. And as we can see, TikTok's added four varied themes. You could just hit add theme, but let's actually click view detail. And this one gives us more choice over what we add. 
you can see it shows a brief outline of what things look like. I'm going to untick the full and left ones and I'm just going to tick camera only. Now I'm now going to hit add theme. What you'll notice is on the left, you now have a new theme or themes if you chose more than one. And because we're in compatibility mode, I'm once again going to click edit to zoom in a bit on my new themes. So you can see around my camera, we now have a new border. And if we add any sources in, once again, for example, if we add a goal source, you can see the theme is now matching. You would then simply go ahead and add any more sources that you want. Once again, personally, I would add in Tickfinity sources. And once you're happy with your final stream layout, you would just go live the normal way. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and watch this video next for more live studio tips.